that's hefty. Whatever it is. I don't know what it is. That's, it's got some heft to it. Piglet. Come on. Looks like it is. It's a pig. Yeah, baby. Come on in here. Doubling up on Keeper Hawkfish out off of Clearwater, Florida. We're having an outstanding day out here. My friends at Newton's are really doing a great job getting these fish to the boat. Uh, the bite's been pretty steady since we set up on this ledge. Uh, so hopefully we can get a few more uh, in the box. We started out with small ones, but now we got the, the bigger fish. So we're, we're really doing it up this time. This is the best day, again, <coughs> the best day ever of hogfish for me. Right here in my 22-foot bay boat. So you want to catch hogfish. Well, my friend, you've come to a good place to get some key tips and information on the hogfish. Often called hog snapper, they're actually a wrasse species of fish and they're found mostly in the state of Florida here in the United States. A lot of them down in the Florida Keys and Associated Islands. Florida is the place to go for hogfish around here. So uh, right here off of Tampa Bay where we are, there's a lot of hogfish and right now is a great time to get them. Uh, you'll notice that between probably Thanksgiving and St. Patrick's Day, you're gonna see a lot of hogfish pictures coming on social media or anywhere else you can see hogfish pictures or other fish pictures online. Um, there's a time of year that is really good to target them and that is the late fall and winter period. And this is because hogfish gather and spawn at this time. They come in and congregate on some of the shallower areas here off of Tampa Bay and uh, there's going to be a few good sized males or big males with a whole bunch of females. The, the males have a harem of females that they breed with. So if you can find a good ledge with hogfish activity, there's a good chance you'll get on a bunch of them. And uh, hogfish are known, if I can pronounce it right, as a protogynous hermaphrodite. So they actually start their life as a female and then they transfer over to a male as they grow. So a lot of the smaller fish you're gonna catch are female hogfish. Uh, I've caught a few keeper sized females, uh, but a lot of them are actually males. And you can tell the difference because there is a coloration difference and a snout size difference between the, between the uh, sexes. So your females are a little bit lighter, a little bit pinker off, and they don't have that really dark brown blotch on their forehead area above their eyes and down the snout. It's a little bit lighter. So where should you be trying to target hogfish? Well, hogfish love natural reefs. Uh, you can find some around artificial reefs. That's, they'll definitely show up there. Uh, but the best place I've found uh, is a ledge. Uh, a crevice or a crack in the bottom will do uh, good as well. But some sort of rocky edge that sticks out and has a gap underneath of it. That's the best place to catch hogfish. They like that. They like uh, that feature because I believe they like to get up under there and browse around and look for prey. They also feel safe up under there like a lot of other species will take advantage of it uh, for both those reasons. I found uh, that the ledges will outproduce other areas. I've caught hogfish on rock piles around the pipeline. Uh, you can catch them on big expanses of hard bottom. Uh, there'll be a bunch of them there. but some of these ledges, I mean, they really stack up with a bunch of hogfish and they utilize that feature a lot. So the hogfish, he eats crustaceans, mollusks, any type of, you know, shelled organisms with a meaty center in it. Uh, that's what he's looking for. Little crabs, you know, shrimp, sh uh, snails, um, anything that's got a shell with a little uh, protein bar inside of it, that's what that hogfish is looking for. They don't eat, as far as I know and from what I've read, a lot of finfish. Uh, they're kind of a browsing type of fish. They get over a reef and they kind of hover around and investigate. They dig down in the sand, they probe the sand, they probe little crevices and stuff and they're looking for stuff that they can you know feel around with their jaw that sticks way out of their face and uh, something they can grab onto. So uh, hawkfish are kind of a peculiar fish. They're different from a lot of other fish that they live amongst. Uh, they have a, a, a different way of doing things. So let's talk about where you should be targeting the hogfish. Um, again, the ledge is probably the best spot, and I'm gonna say 50 to 75 feet of water in this area where we are is a hot spot 
for hogfish. I've caught a lot of hogfish in that zone and I found a lot of them off of John's Pass and I found a lot of them off of Clearwater. Catch a few right out of Pass a Grill um, and then off of Anna Maria there's a lot of them down there. So these are places that you should go check out. And I would say you can catch a lot of hogfish inside of 20 miles offshore around here. You don't need to go way out. Uh, you know, 10 to 15 miles, 17 miles is a really good zone for these fish. Now in the Gulf of Mexico, hogfish are 14 inches minimum keeper size. In the Atlantic, they're 16 inches. So keep this in mind when you're out there. And you're going to catch a lot of fish between 12 and 17 inches. There's a lot of those. Um, every now and then you're going to stick a really big one. That's probably 18, 19, 20 plus inches. Those hogfish are really good fighters. Uh, when you stick that, you're really going to know it. It's going to be real heavy uh, when you stick it initially and they fight in a particular way that uh, is different from a lot of other fish. Um, but the best thing I could compare it to is probably a trigger fish. They have a really rapid kick. Uh, when you stick them, they just really thump, 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 thump and then they get heavy and then they'll make another run. They'll pull drag. They're pretty strong fish for their size. A lot of fun and even better eating. Amazing eating. So what you're looking for when it comes to hogfish is a ledge that's got some growth and life on it. Um, there's a lot of different bottom out there to choose from but I try to find a very prominent ledge and I'm looking on my sonar and I'm looking for a good growth line on the bottom and I'm looking for a few fish marks. I'm not necessarily looking for huge fish shows. Some, on some of these reefs, some of these huge fish shows are actually bait or tom tates and things like that and it's a lot of little bait stealers. But if you pull up on a ledge that has good growth show on your sonar and it has some nice fish marks in there, that could be a really, really good place for hogfish. Could be a lot of snapper there, probably some red grouper and gags as well. Um, you know, these same places will produce a lot of different species of fish that you're interested in. So how do you hook up on these hogfish? Well, I'm using mostly fresh and live shrimp as bait. Again, hogfish love to eat crustaceans. They love to eat, you know, sand fleas, uh, crabs, snails, things like that. They're going to be interested in that. Anything they can uh, grab and bust up with that protruding jaw is what they want. Uh, hogfish uh, are don't uh, you're not going to need really big tackle for hogfish. This is a 5000 series hyper fishing reel and this is an O'Hara platinum series rod. And this setup I use for a lot of different things. I cut big jacks with it. You can catch nice snook, smaller grouper, uh, mackerel, it's a really good choice for mackerel and hogfish will definitely get cranked in on this setup. So if you're looking for an affordable way to get in to this type of fishing, check out the O'Hara HP 5000 and the O'Hara Platinum Series Rod. So on that reel I've got 25 pound braid and I'm running that to a 30 pound leader. Hogfish aren't super line shy, if you got good bait they'll probably come hit it. Uh, and then on the leader I'm using something like this Mission Fishing Circle Hook Jig Head. That's a one ounce or I'm using a half ounce. Depends on the depth of water and the current. If I'm using a knocker rig, I might start out with this two ounce slip weight, or if I'm in the right water depth and current, I might go to a one and a half or a one. Same size leader, one knot circle hook. I yak about these all the time. That catches 90% of my fish. Only when I'm going for really, really big fish uh, do I usually step it up. But that one knot circle hook by Trident Hook, that's a winner right there. Definitely recommend stocking up on those. So, I'm on the hogfish ledge, I've got my setup with the jig heads or the knocker rigs, and I'm using shrimp, could be live shrimp, uh, could be dead, could be sand fleas. I drop my bait down, and I'm waiting for that hogfish to come investigate and thump it. Some species of fish will try to kill their prey before they eat it, and I think hogfish may be one of those species. Um, I can't say for a fact, but I think that is the case. So hogfish he's gonna come investigate and he's gonna thump your bait and it might be a subtle bite at first you might be like okay was that a little trash fish or what was that then you might get a harder thump that's him eating the bait now he's got it so at this point I know that I've got the fish and I'm waiting for him to confirm that with a tight line so that really good thump 
told me that that was a fish that I'm interested in catching and that weight confirms that he's got it. So when I feel the weight on the tip of my rod with that tight line, I'm reeling down and then I'm setting the hook. I'm not setting it with everything I got usually. I mean, I get a little excited sometimes, but since I'm using circle hooks, uh, it's important that that line is already tight. Uh, you don't want to set the hook on a circle hook with a slack line. So I've got confirmation, I'm cranking down. The weight of the fish is loading up the rod already, so that's already putting pressure on the tip of that hook, on the hook point, against the fish's mouth. And then when I swing, it buries the tip of the hook into the fish's mouth and you got him. So finally, my favorite part, when I get the fish home and I clean it, I'm gonna be coating it and uh, pan frying it, or I'm gonna be probably baking it. I'm gonna put some, uh, some lemon juice and, and butter and a little bit of garlic maybe, or some other type of seasoning on that hogfish. And uh, I'm probably gonna eat three or four different fish because they're so good. Uh, you know, average keeper fish, you're gonna get a, a chunk of meat about that big off of them. And uh, I mean, I could sit there and eat fish after fish for a while. They're so good. Um, I like a lot of different fish like flounder, cobia, you know, uh, some mangrove snapper, uh, yellowfin tuna and blackfin tuna. That's pretty hard to beat. Wahoo is pretty hard to beat. That hogfish, I'm telling you what, man, that's an amazing eating fish. And I think that beats out just about everything. Well, we've come to the end of this tutorial. Uh, we got some line being spooled in the other room. We're here live in the store right now at store hours, but appreciate you coming by Head First Fishing. Uh, we got a lot of good information here, so go through our playlist and see if you can find something else that you like. We got a lot of action videos, uh, a lot of adventures, so a lot of good content for you to watch. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button. Visit St. Pete Fishing Outfitters, Tampa Fishing Outfitters, and Tarpon Fishing Outfitters and come by the store and get all the gear you need for hogfish and other fishing adventures. I'll see you later.